So you should be able to see my screen and uh, I'm gonna work on the Newman projections for one chloropropane. I'm actually gonna approach this a slightly different way than you may have. The first thing I always recommend doing, of course, is writing the molecule to make sure you actually have the right structure. So one chloropropane will have a Cl and then a CH2 and a CH2 and another CH3. And if we number those carbons, carbon one is the one that has the chlorine attached. So what we wanna do is look down the carbon one to carbon two bond. The next thing I would do is I would take that and draw that in a full uh, kind of dashed wedge structure. So you're actually showing what's attached to the two carbons that you're gonna be looking down. We don't need to show the dashed wedge on the carbon three because we're not actually looking down that bond. Oops, these are hydrogens, not chlorines, sorry. All right, so we've got a Cl on the first carbon um, and a CH3 on the second carbon and, and all the other substituents are hydrogen. So then what we want to do is we want to look down the bond from C1 to C2. So this will be my front carbon and this will be my back carbon and I'll be looking down that bond. I've automatically drawn this in the most stable conformation that puts the chlorine and the CH3 in the anti-position. And it's usually productive to try to draw the most stable conformer first. So on my back carbon, the way I've written it, I've got a CH3 pointing down and I've got hydrogens out here. And then on my front carbon, I've got a chlorine pointing up and the two hydrogens out like this. So that's the anti-conformation that's gonna be the most stable. The least stable conformer is gonna be the one that eclipses the chlorine and the CH3. So I can go up here and I can draw my least stable conformer. And it doesn't really matter which one you leave. I'm gonna leave the front carbon with the same conformation with the chlorine up and then I'm gonna rotate the back carbon to put the CH3 group up here. And I'm making sure that I only have one of these uh, substituents on the back carbon between each set of the two on the front carbon. So just this hydrogen is here. This one doesn't want to be down there. It wants to be in between the chlorine and the hydrogen. So that's the least stable. And what we've got is an eclipsing steric strain here between the two big groups. And then we've got two eclipsing torsional strains. And we actually know that each of those is about one kilocalorie per mole. So we've got two kilocalories per mole eclipsing torsional strain there. And then we've got some eclipsing steric strain. We know that's gonna be much more than one kilocalorie per mole, but we don't know exactly what it will be. So then we'll go for the, the gauche conformers. Right. There's basically no strain here because the chlorine and the methyl group are not interacting, but they're gonna be two gauche conformers. Right? And again, I'm gonna leave the front carbon alone and I'm gonna rotate the back carbon to put the methyl group either here on the right or alternatively the mirror image that puts the methyl group here on the left. Right? And those are gonna be equivalent in energy. And what we're looking at here is a gauche torsional strain. We don't know what the magnitude of that gauche torsional strain is between a chlorine and, and a CH3 group, but we can infer that it's probably less than the gauche torsional strain between two methyl groups. Because chlorine, although it's much more massive um, than the methyl group, because the nucleus is larger, it's probably not a larger volume than the CH3 group because the CH3 group actually has four nuclei. So in terms of the amount of steric strain, chlorine is gonna be smaller sterically than CH3. It's also polarizable, which means the electron cloud can shift a little to try to get away from uh, the other, uh, the, 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 to try to minimize the repulsion, especially in the eclipsing. And the carbon-chlorine bond is quite a bit longer, which means that the chlorine is probably not right over the methyl group, it's probably up a little bit. And then I'm looking for the other eclipsed ones, which will have the chlorine eclipsed 
with a hydrogen and the methyl eclipsed with a hydrogen. So again, we'll leave that front carbon alone. And we want a conformer that has the methyl group over this hydrogen, but then we're also going to have a mirror image conformer where the methyl group is over this hydrogen instead. So you'll notice that these two are mirror images of each other, and these two are mirror images. And in these, we have a hydrogen over hydrogen, that's an eclipsing torsional strain, a hydrogen over methyl, that's another eclipsing torsional strain, and a hydrogen over chlorine. Those are all eclipsing torsional strains. We know this one costs about one kilocalorie per mole, and we know this one costs about 1.3 kilocalories per mole. We don't know what this one costs, but we're pretty sure that 2.3 plus whatever that is, is going to be more than this gauche torsional strain. Right? So we know these gauche conformers, because they're staggered, are lower in energy than the eclipsed. So this is our most stable. These two are equal in energy and a little bit less stable than the anti. And then we have to decide whether the eclipsing steric strain is going to be significant enough to make this one higher in energy than that one. And it will be, right? We've got a minimum of two kilocalories per mole plus the eclipsing steric strain. Here we've got one plus 1.3 or 2.3 kilocalories per mole plus whatever eclipsing torsional strain we have here with HCl. We can be quite certain that the methyl over chlorine steric eclipsing strain is larger, that is more than 0.3 larger than the hydrogen over chlorine eclipsing steric strain or uh, torsional strain. This one's only a torsional strain, this one's a steric strain, and the steric strains are always larger. So then if we want to, we can actually uh, start rotating. We can say, okay, this one would be my zero degree conformer. And then if I start rotating it to the, to the left, right, I can rotate this methyl group over here. This would be number two, that would be 60 degrees. I keep rotating it. Number three would be this one here, which would be 120 degrees keep rotating it, 180 degrees would be where I have the eclipsing steric strain, and then I rotate a little bit more, and I'd have my 240 degree conformer, and then I rotate a little bit more, my 300 degree conformer, and then if I rotated this a little bit more, that CH3 group would come back down and be back to zero degrees. So I could actually plot those on a graph. So that's the, um, the conformers that you want for the one chloropropane. You'll notice that the energy diagram for that is going to look identical if we put energy on the y-axis and the reaction coordinate, right? And we start with the anti-conformer here at zero degrees, and then we go up to 60 degrees, 120, 180 is going to be the highest energy, 240, 300, and then back to 360. It's going to look identical to the energy diagram for butane, where you've got a gauche strain here, you've got eclipsing torsional strains here, and then this high energy one, you've got the eclipsing steric. And it has that traditional, giving you the finger with your knuckles there, um, which you'll expect to see very similar to butane. All right, the overall shape is identical to butane. The only thing is that the energies will be slightly different. So that's the quiz. Are there any questions? I'm gonna stop this recording.